All right, well, my name is Erin Bauer. I'm a recent PhD in musicology from Claremont Graduate University in Southern California. And the name of my presentation, The Digital Network as Modern Cultural Community, Electronic Modes of Personal Belonging for International Kahuna Musicians. From the, from the initial influence of European salon music and introduction of the button accordion in the second half of the 19th century, Conjunto music has developed in South Texas as a unique and popular form of regional dance music, historically forming a powerful symbol of cultural identity among the rural, working class Texas-Mexican border community. Yet in recent years, due largely to the global distribution of regional recordings through electronic entertainment platforms like YouTube, as well as increasingly effortless methods of digital communication, such as email and social media, worldwide interest and participation in this highly localized creative genre has created a new sense of personal belonging for international musicians and an imagined artistic community accessible only through electronic modes of cultural dissemination. Through online models of representative performances and electronic communication with eager regional teachers, this paper demonstrates that newfound digital accessibility stimulates contemporary musical communities based on class considerations and individual identification, rather than more historical groupings of ethnicity and location, thus shifting our understanding of culture and creative collectivity in the modern digital world. With a relatively consistent structure, instrumentation, repertory, and style established by the middle of the 20th century, the typical Texas Mexican conjunto ensemble consists of button accordion, bajo sexto, which is a large Spanish Mexican guitar containing 12 strings and six double courses and typically tuned in fourths, as well as electric bass guitar and drum set. While many regional musicians have remained reluctant to insert external musical elements into the traditional conjunto sound, the cultural constituency have generally embraced international artists within local performance opportunities. For musicians from Japan, France, Spain, and the Netherlands, Texas Mexican Conjunto provides a sense of cultural identity and acceptance into a creative community far removed from more expected familial and locational influences. While scholars such as Arjun Apadure have emphasized the importance of transnational mobilization and electronic modes of media to the contemporary movement of cultural practices beyond the traditional boundaries of the nation state, the digital network renders physical mobilization <coughs> largely irrelevant, while more conventional forms of media have been replaced by social media. Online accessibility creates a digital community, as tangible in-person communication becomes unnecessary in forming far-reaching creative communities. In this way, cultural practices move beyond their geographic provenance, allowing individual choice and unexpected circumstantial identification to largely take the place of artistic heritage. As the digital network brings any number of external cultures into the intimacy of someone's home, musicians increasingly choose someone else's music to represent their own behaviors and beliefs, turning contemporary culture into a diverse collection of like-minded individuals with seemingly dissimilar backgrounds, but perhaps more in common than more conventional cultural groups based on ethnicity and location alone. Most international conjunto artists have taught themselves to perform within the genre by listening to regional recordings and watching videos through electronic platforms like YouTube. This external reliance on digital recordings to learn appropriate Texas Mexican techniques maintains the oral nature of the tradition, but certainly shifts the functional implementation of this type of instruction. During the 1990s, a well-known Japanese conjunto musician named Kenji Gatsuke took advantage of technology to teach himself to play the button accordion using modern equipment to slow the music down as he repeatedly played back traditional recordings. For more recent international musicians, the increasing ease of electronic access to the border community has further enhanced contemporary participation in the regional identity far beyond historic notions of ethnicity, language, and location. The careers of many international artists have been <laughs> built through the digital network, enabling performers from around the world to share their music with important regional audiences and ultimately gain acceptance and commercial success through the online platform as a legitimate part of the Conjunto community. Within this musical realm, the tight-knit Texas Mexican culture has expanded to embrace the digital participation of any number of artists and audiences who identify with the regional music. For example, before a talented Dutch musician named Wayne Verheiden became a well-established participant within the traditional musical community, 
A quick search of online regional fora and YouTube videos shows that the young accordionist fostered his growing interest in the Kununto genre by reaching out to regional musicians and audiences for guidance. Before commercially invaluable performances and eventual recordings with local legend Baco Menes, Verhaden can be found asking stylistic questions of the online South Texas-based Reyes Accordion Forum and offering performances in a traditional style, while also soliciting feedback from the Texas Mexican community through YouTube. For Verhaden and others, participation within the digital community has also eventually resulted in full acceptance within the physical regional community. Flacco is now named Verhaden as his stylistic heir and takes a particular interest in the young accordionist's artistic and commercial development, providing a type of continuing hereditary link and lasting oral tradition outside of genetic or even cultural bounds. In turn, this ultimate physical acceptance has led to increased participation within the digital realm, as Verhaden continues to present online videos and conversation for fans throughout the United States, the Netherlands, and around the world. In this way, geographic location itself becomes largely extraneous, as the musical community can exist almost entirely online. Digital and international participation in the annual Tejano Conjunto Festival in San Antonio further demonstrates the importance of contemporary online capabilities in creating a worldwide Conjunto community. Through media-based representations and increasingly digital presentations of performances at the festival, traditional Conjunto music has traveled to a diverse and geographically widespread audience. While the majority of the physical audience at the festival still identifies within the genre's most traditional geographic and socioeconomic constituency, the event also regularly attracts a number of musical enthusiasts from a variety of cultural and ethnic backgrounds who have traveled to Texas from locations around the world. Perhaps even more influentially, the festival draws local television cameras and journalists, national media outlets like NPR, and a diverse array of young fans with iPhones, all eager to post live performances on Facebook and YouTube for the world to see, complete with dancing tips, interviews with the musicians, and personal commentary, and all rapidly spreading the regional tradition far beyond its usual home. In this way, beyond live performances at the physical site of the event, and media attention throughout the immediate regional areas and increasing national communities, as well as the recent global availability of electronic versions of local newspaper articles, blogs, television programs, and the like, the Tejano Conjunto Festival increasingly stimulates the production and rapid wide worldwide dissemination of YouTube videos, a contemporary phenomenon which only adds to the global interest in the regional genre and which ultimately attracts additional transnational audiences to the actual event in San Antonio. For example, Marcus de Leon, a conjunto enthusiast and producer of an online video channel called Puro Conjunto 210, describes the popularity of his online videos showcasing the festival among more traditional fans of conjunto, and perhaps even more influentially, also notes the international interest in his online offerings and subsequent effect in developing new audiences for the music and even physically at the festival. Similarly, an Austin accordionist named Susan Torres describes the impact of YouTube videos on her own visibility and some ex unexpected performances requested beyond the regional community. Other regional artists further emphasize a similar media-based spread of the festival, while online comments on videos from the Tejano Conjunto Festival demonstrate a variety of listeners and burgeoning fans from around the world. In this way, while the physical location and musical presentations at the Tejano Conjunto Festival have increased the visibility for the traditional music and influenced demand for performing artists, media attention to the event, particularly in the form of fan-based videos distributed publicly online, has drawn additional widespread interest, turning a physical regional community into a digital forum for the transnational dissemination of the music which in turn encourages diverse listeners to travel to the festival and ultimately creates a new physical community outside of the traditional boundaries of race, language, and location. Looking deeper into the international interest and recent adoption of Conjunto music, certain similarities of background between widespread musicians and audiences become clear, creating what George Lipsitz calls a family of resemblance, in which seemingly disparate cultural groups draw from parallel life experiences to cultivate a cohesive understanding from individual elements. For many, the standard Western instruments and familiar musical qualities, particularly with Conunto's continuing reliance on polka music, create a common background with the regional tradition that stimulates a lasting attraction to the music. For example, 
Beyond Bear Hayden's childhood background spent listening to his father's recordings of Flacco Menace, which in addition to Flacco's own arguably paternal embrace, creates a certain, a certain familial heritage even outside of the typical Texas Mexican community. The Dutch accordionist comes from a region with similar cultural ties to the instrument and rhythmic characteristics, in both cases preliminarily drawn from German polka music. Beyond this unexpected familial association, for Verheyden, Kuhnholdo provides a comfortable regional sound and the corresponding regional advantages of accordion teachers, mentors, and festivals, with just <coughs> enough exoticism to make it interesting and unique, despite the expansive geographic and ethnic distance. In this regard, digital access to the regional Kuhnholdo community has provided an unprecedented opportunity to connect familiar musical experiences with far-reaching global characteristics, thus shifting the contemporary sense of culture to include diverse groupings beyond positional boundaries. International Kumbo musicians like Bear Hayden work hard to blend seamlessly into the Texas Mexican musical culture, typically establishing their artistic legitimacy by remaining even closer to the traditional Kumbo sound than many current regional musicians. The local Kununbo constituency <coughs> typically applauds these international artists' commitment to the genre and usually <coughs> high level of musicianship accepting them into the community with a genuine sense of pride and cultural appreciation. However, while the adoption of the customary Texas Mexican sound by far-flung international musicians is commonly accepted and even welcomed among the regional population, Conundo musicians are often quick to criticize and distinguish themselves from the closely related Norteño style of Northern Mexico, as well as some of the more daring musical experiments of contemporary Conundo progressive groups and the more nationally and commercially prominent successes of Musica Tejana and fusion bands like the Texas Tornadoes. At its core, and despite a glowing global and digital contingency, Conolta music thus remains a highly localized and symbolically significant practice, deeply loyal to its stylistic and sociocultural roots, and largely resistant to any change in interpretation. The conservative style of international conjunto artists, therefore, and perhaps surprisingly, maintains the standard regional tradition, while many of the more expectedly similar local and cultural practices instead threaten the stylistic continuity and sociological significance of the historic genre. In this regard, many of the modern creative practices lying just outside of conventional, geographic, cultural, stylistic, and commercial capacities remain close enough to present a danger to the regional construction of cultural identity established by conservative Kununta characteristics. While international Kununta participants alternatively provide an attractive, traditional sound in a more comfortable and sociologically non-threatening manner. Despite rather substantial geographic and cultural distances, the common acceptance of international musicians within an online community does not take anything away from the regional culture or commercial prospects for local musicians. Conversely, admitting the changing styles of Norteño, progressive, and popular musicians into the regional sound affects the continuing tradition and threatens the sociocultural symbolism associated with Conunto throughout the 20th century, while simultaneously appropriating many of the limited economic opportunities for local performers. For the Texas Mexican border community and other minority populations around the world, creative characteristics can establish a counter hegemonic response to dominant cultural practices. As Manuel Pena has it convincingly argued, Conunto originally formed a symbol of cultural identity for the working class community against the middle class Anglo population and the upwardly mobile and increasingly Americanized Texas Mexican constituency. Digital participants within this widespread continuing tradition therefore respond not only to familiar musical characteristics and aesthetic identification, but also to this shared sense of retaliation against cultural marginalization. In an increasingly interconnected world, popular creative characteristics from the United States work in combination with the dominant sense of cultural identity to establish a single hegemonic foundation counter to global marginalized populations. While certain locational differences remain, a deeper creative divide can now frequently be found between rich and poor, regardless of geographic origin. In modern musical pursuits, popular global culture is increasingly that a set of unified worldwide artistic practices initially drawn from American influences, but progressively forming a single globalized understanding of creative identity throughout mainstream populations. In contrast, minority communities often struggle to maintain a personal sense of identity outside of dominant practices. 
by forming an online community of international musicians connected through the creative pursuits of a single, historically marginalized tradition. Kanoto music can serve as a worldwide representation of a powerful minority response to the globalized uh, culture. The digital world int introduces an overwhelming arrangement of cultural possibilities. In a contemporary global society, intimately linked through increasingly effortless forms of electronic communication, individual artists become free to choose a personal identity from any number of disparate backgrounds, regardless of ethnicity, class, language, or location. However, within this dizzying assortment of creative decisions, the more historically comfortable considerations of local community and clear sociocultural identification disappear. Faced with too many cultural possibilities <coughs> in the chaos of modern life, Musicians around the world are often drawn to what is familiar, although perhaps not historically typical, to form a personal sense of belonging outside of traditional boundaries. The socioeconomic background, counter-hegemonic symbolism, and accordion-based musical characteristics of the Kununto tradition create a familiar sense of community for many international musicians, despite dramatic differences of geographical circumstance. In this way, Kununto musicians use the capabilities of the contemporary digital age to draw from common social experiences and create their own interpretation of a unified, creative community outside of traditional understandings of national musical boundaries. In the cultural chaos of the modern world, popular music can therefore help to re-articulate a sense of meaning for marginalized communities through worldwide connections of similar economic positionalities, feelings of discrimination and corresponding sonic characteristics in regional experiences. Indeed, for any me meaningful musical understanding in the complicated and highly interconnected world, commonalities of socioeconomic background and familiar, although often unexpected heritage, sometimes seem to generate a more appropriate cultural community than historical notions of common language, ethnicity, and location alone. Beginning in the second half of the century, increasingly common modes of electronic communication and digital dissemination have scattered Texas Mexican Pununfa music through diverse corners of the United States and in recent years around the world, suggesting a shifting sense of the music's meaning and historic connection to regional identity in the face of a new and diverse global constituency. During this time, the music has incorporated certain external characteristics, but overall, the, com uh, the commercialization and transnational spread stimulated through contemporary electronic capabilities have not altered the creative form in any meaningful way. The worldwide visibility for Conjunto, created by the digital distribution of the regional form, has created a transnational interest and appreciation for the music, a local feeling of pride and self-respect in the unique cultural heritage, and ultimately a certain recognition and legitimization for an ethnic and socioeconomic community that has long struggled to achieve mainstream validation. Yet, beyond this international attention and increasing diversity of cultural identification, the key qualities of the music itself have remained fundamentally constant. The international interest and adoption of the highly localized cultural tradition has instead generated a rather unexpected consolidation of musical style, shifting the contemporary understanding of Texas Mexican accordion music to embrace a fundamentally folkloric interpretation, but also establishing a conceptual continuum between the original model and more popular pursuits. In the modern digital world, historic constructions of indigenous identity become separated from individual race, class, language, and location. Instead, closely connected to the traditional Kanunfa community through unprecedented technological means, international musicians choose a corresponding cultural identity based on familiar socioeconomic, stylistic, and wistfully familial backgrounds, as well as purely aesthetic attractions and often largely disconnected from more conventional geographic and hereditary considerations. Although recent attention to Texas Mexican Kununfa music outside of traditional cultural boundaries might imply a general contemporary incorporation of popular and global characteristics, <coughs> and although popular elements are inserted into certain regional performances, overall widespread attention to Kununfa has had the opposite effect, creating a fundamental and conservative musical style even in listening and participating constituencies far beyond the original working class community. In this way, external participation in the regional tradition does not detract from local concepts of identity or really even contribute to Texas Mexican artistic practices in a noticeable way, but it does provide a sense of belonging for musicians caught outside of an appropriate creative community, demonstrating that in the contemporary digital world, 
common musical practices experienced through electronic modes of communication often have more influence over imagined identities than more traditional cultural considerations. In considering the contemporary destabilization of cultural identity in the wake of widespread globalization, digital networks can therefore serve to rearticulate a sense of belonging for musicians accessible only through new forms of electronic dissemination. Thank you very much. So your whole, your talk and the previous one have got me thinking about Bourdieu. Okay. Um, and you know, Bourdieu's basic understanding of, of how culture works mm -hmm. is that you have a, a field of restricted production, mm -hmm. um, which tends to set, be the sort of avant-garde. And then you have the sort of field of, of uh, what does he call it? Uh, unrestricted, no, that's not it. Uh, the larger field, the popular okay. uh, forms. And they tend to rehearse and, and um, imitate the, the forms and styles and genres of the, the restricted production. Mm -hmm. Would it be fair to say that, um, that, that, that digital technologies have turned conjunto music from a fairly, uh, 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 um, what we might call a, a low capital uh, form into something that is restricted? Mm -hmm. In the same way that the word artisanal used to mean not very good mm -hmm. and kind of rustic. And now it's like, I want artisanal everything. I want artisanal popcorn. I want artisanal caramel, right? So would it be fair to say that about, about, about the way this is working? I think that it would. Um, I think what I found interesting in looking at this research was that the digital network kind of opens up. I mean, Kahundo is a very, a very localized tradition. And it's something that people, up until the last maybe 20 years or so, didn't really know about outside of this very regional population. And so with the advent of digital technology so that people around the world are able to see that, yeah, I think they definitely start taking those bits into themselves. And I also found it interesting that the kind of the, the farther that you go from that regional population, the more that these international musicians, and there are some popular musicians as well who are taking um, little bits of Pinuto into their music, they tend to be more conservative in style. Mm. So it's almost like they're trying to get that sense of authenticity from the regional population, where the regional population themselves are trying to take you know, some more popular characteristics and push the boundaries a little more. So yeah, I think that's definitely a fair question. Yes? Do you uh, think that uh, Brown Sabbath is a Corinto album? <laughs> I think it has elements. <laughs> <laughs> That was actually the more serious question. Uh, of course, I guess most people don't know what Brown Sabbath is. But uh, anyway, um, Tejano. Tell us. Uh, no, I'll let you find it out. Uh, Tejano and Cajunto uh, used to be fairly differentiable right. in terms of what music one referred to. Uh, do you, what, how do you map? I mean, that's just it's, you it's becoming it. less so. Right. So you have a lot of artists now, for example, the Texas Tornadoes. I don't know if you know of them. Um, but that's a group with some more popular musicians. Doug Sam was originally in that, Aki Meyer, Flaco Menes. Um, and they take a lot of elements of the conjunto music, and then they also take elements of Tejano, and they start to mix it. So I think that you're seeing that more and more. Um, I was looking at a festival in San Antonio that is a conjunto festival, but you're also seeing it at that festival, but it's starting to just get mixed with all of these different genres as well. So yeah, I think that that line is definitely being blurred. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.